criminal penalties. In general, a person who willfully commits, willfully attempts to commit, or willfully conspires to commit, or aids and abets in the commission of an unlawful act described in subsection A, shall upon conviction be fined not more than $1 million, or if a natural person may be in prison for not more than 20 years, or both. You know what that means. Not more than $1 million means up to $1 million, right? You realize that not in prison for more than 20 years means in prison for up to 20 years, right? Inapplicability of FOIA. Any information submitted to the federal government by a party to a covered transaction in accordance with this act, as well as any information the federal government may create relating to review of the covered transaction is exempt from disclosure under Section 552 of Title V United States Code, commonly referred to as the Freedom of Information Act. To advise the Secretary in carrying out the responsibilities, Chapter 10 of Part 1 of Title V of United States Code shall not apply to any meeting of such advisory committee. The entire purpose of that is to reduce the undue influence of special interests and lobbyists. That's not going to get abused at all. Any restricted data is defined in Section 11 of the Atomic Energy Act of 1954. We're citing the Atomic Energy Act of 1954 in a banned TikTok bill. The Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States cleared the transaction and notified the parties to the transaction or a broader transaction that included the transaction that the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States completed all action with respect to the transaction or a broader transaction that included the transaction. Who is this, Dr. Seuss? Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. I want to start out this video by making one thing unequivocally clear. I dislike TikTok. And unlike certain other companies that will pre-install TikTok on your phone and then claim that, that independent repair people install TikTok on your phone, I actually am an independent repair person that does not like TikTok. I don't use TikTok. I don't install TikTok on people's phones. And the three times in my life that I have looked at a TikTok link because somebody sent it to me, I use Tor. I'm not installing TikTok on my phone and letting it spy on me. I'm not using my normal browser and letting it see whatever else or set cookies and like, we're not doing that. I use Tor. I dislike TikTok intensely and I have no defense for this, whether it is the level of spying that is done via TikTok or whether we're just talking about the crappy trends that it, that get proliferated on TikTok and just the, the brain cells that I lose anytime I've used this particular website. I'm not a fan of TikTok. However, just because I'm not a fan of TikTok does not mean that I'm going to stand in favor of or defend legislation that destroys our civil liberties that, in my opinion, is Patriot Act version 2. And that is what we're going to read today. That is what this is. If you want to listen to me read the entire 55 pages on my other channel, I'll link down below to a two-hour long video that does just that. We are not going to read headlines. We are not going to watch videos where people have sensationalized the bill without even reading it. We are not going to read the newspaper. We are going to read the source text. We are going to read the actual proposed bill in its entirety. And we are also going to read some of the U.S. codes that are referenced by this bill so you understand exactly how damaging it is. I'm going to link to all of the citations of this down below so that you can read it for yourself. That being said, let's get into reading the Patriot Act of 2023. To authorize the Secretary of Commerce to review and prohibit certain transactions between persons in the United States and foreign adversaries and for other purposes. And this act may be cited as the Restricting the Emergence of Security Threats that Risk Information and Communications Technology Act. In general, the term covered transaction means a transaction in which an entity described in subparagraph B has any interest, including through an interest in a contract for the provision of technology or service or any class of such transactions. 11. Information and Communications Technology Products or Services. The term information and communications technology products or services means any hardware, software, or other product or service primarily intended to fulfill or enable the function of information or data processing, storage, retrieval, or communication by electronic means, including transmission, storage, and display. 12. Mitigation measure. The term mitigation measure means a measure agreed to in an agreement between any relevant party and the federal government, or ordered by the federal government and of which any relevant party has been notified in any manner under, addressed under this act to address any risk arising from a covered transaction or associated with a covered holding. The term transaction means any acquisition, importation, transfer, installation, dealing in, or use of the, any information, communications, technology, product, or service, including ongoing activities such as managed services, data transmission, software updates, repairs, or the provision of data hosting services, or a class of such transactions. Section 3. Addressing information and communication technology products and services that pose undue or unacceptable risk. A. In general, the Secretary, in consultation with the relevant executive department and agency heads, is authorized to and shall take action to identify, deter, disrupt, prevent, prohibit, investigate, or otherwise mitigate, including by negotiating, entering into, or imposing and enforcing any mitigation measure to address any risk arising from any covered transaction by any person 
or with respect to any property subject to the jurisdiction of the United States, the Secretary determines at one poses an undue or unacceptable risk of a sabotage or subversion of the design, integrity, manufacturing, production, distribution, installation, operation, or maintenance of information and communications technology products and services in the United States. B catastrophic effects on the security or resilience of critical infrastructure or digital economy of the United States. Remember, critical infrastructure is defined by the Patriot Act. So critical infrastructure can mean critical infrastructure is broadly defined here. And when you talk about covered transaction, let's just go back to covered transaction over here. Okay, so covered transaction means a transaction which an entity describes in subparagraph B has any interest, including through an interest in a contract for the provision of technology or service or any such class of transactions. So provision of, t of the technology or services. So a covered transaction can essentially, again, if you're a lawyer, please correct me if I go astray here, but I do believe that sounds like if you have a, if, if you like you're hosting a website, it's so like a covered transaction in this case could literally be that you host a website. So in general, the secretary in consultation with the relevant department and agency heads is authorized to and shall take action to identify, deter, disrupt, prevent, prohibit, investigate, or otherwise mitigate, including by negotiating or entering into or imposing and enforcing any mitigation measure to address any risk arising from any covered transaction by any person or with respect to any property subject to the jurisdiction of the United States that the Secretary determines. Poses an undue or unacceptable risk of sabotage or subversion of design, integrity, manufacturing, production, distribution, installation, operation, or maintenance of information and communications technology products and services in the United States. Here the Secretary is the Secretary of Commerce. So the Secretary of Commerce has a lot of jurisdiction to be able to just decide, I don't like this get rid of it. Interfering in or altering the result or report a result of a federal election. Oh, <laughs> okay. Again, when it comes to election interference, you had, again, like, I'm not even, oh, oh my God. Oh, gee, oh dear God. Okay. 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 In 2016, we had, again, like, I, I, to be clear, I've, I've read a lot about it and like, I get it when you have ads that are paid for in rubles that are saying that Blue Lives Matter protests should show up here and then Black Lives Matter protests should show up here, and you're asking these two groups of people that have diametrically opposed political viewpoints to show up to the same place at the same time. They don't like each other. I get how that's just like trying to cause trouble. And it's funny how a lot of these ads wind up getting paid for in rubles. Like, I get it, I get it, I get it. You know, sometimes that stuff has a point. There's also times where this is just massive cope, where it's, you know, somebody put up an ad that like makes fun of a politician. Like, I don't know, like, there are a lot of times where there are political ads that get put up that are just designed to screw with people and cause chaos. There are political ads that are outright BS lies. There are ads that we disagree with. Um, how do I put this? You know, you, you see all the, the, like, there was so much cope in 2016. There was even more cope, dare I say it, in 2020, still up to today. Um, there are a lot of people that or yelling about interference in federal elections, what qualifies as interference in federal elections, this is going to be a, f this is going to be a crap show, to be honest with you. This is going to be an absolute and utter crap show. So interfering in or altering the result or reported result of a federal election as determined in coordination with the Attorney General, the Director of National Intelligence, the Secretary of Treasury, and the Federal Election Commission. So at least it's more than like one person. So it's more like one person can't just yell cope. It has to be like all of these people have to yell cope. It says end, not or. D, coercive or criminal activities by a foreign adversary that are designed to undermine democratic processes and institutions or steer policy and regulatory decisions in favor of the strategic objectives of a foreign adversary to the detriment of the national security of the United States as determined in coordination with the Attorney General, the Director of National Intelligence, the Secretary of the Treasury, and the Federal Election Commission. Okay, here we go. I'm not saying that I'm happy with other countries going out of their way to try to sway uh, American opinion or to try and sway our laws or our policies one way or another. I believe that, you know, again, we, we should be the ones deciding our own policy. We should be the ones having the discussion on our policy and so on and so forth. That being said, while it makes me sick to see other people try and like, you know, stick their dick in our affairs. Um, and I get that we've stuck our dick into other people's affairs over history. A bill that allows this, because again, how often... It, are you undermining a democratic institution or are you just saying something that is counter to the narrative that's currently being set? You know, that, that's, that's really important here. And again, 
this is this is not a banned TikTok bill. In 2016, we had a lot of people yelling that the election was interfered with by foreign adversaries. And in 2020, you had people that were screaming that the election was rigged because, you know, like to actually put it into a bill that we can shut down or mitigate certain aspects of the internet related to it. This is scary. And we have enough information. We are at any time that is politically charged enough that you bet your ass that this is going to be misused. So again, to be clear, this is not a banned TikTok bill. As Snow Chain said, McCarthyism is back. Who this is used against is really going to depend on who is in office. Software used for connecting and communicating via the internet that is in use by greater than one million persons. It's unique individuals or, hmm. This is interesting. I'm curious if the language here makes that mean unique. Like could my forum could boards.rossmangroup.com if I get a million views per year? If I get a if I get like 80 or 90,000 views a month. If I get 85,000 views a month, do I count? Initiates review the covered transaction including A, desktop applications, B, mobile applications, C, gaming applications, D, payment applications or E, web-based applications or 7, information and communications, technology, products and services integral to A, artificial intelligence and machine learning, B, quantum key distribution, C, quantum communications, D, quantum computing, E, post-quantum cryptography, F, autonomous symptoms, systems, G, advanced robotics, H, biotechnology, I, synthetic bio biology, J, computational biology, and Okay, let's just, can we, can we just reflect on the fact that a banned TikTok bill is talking about computational biology? Can we, just, can we just take a second to stop and appreciate that a banned TikTok bill is 55 pages, includes the ability to get rid of, mitigate, or ban access to anything that, quote, interferes in our elections or democratic process, and is talking about quantum computing in computational biology. Can we just stop to appreciate that for a moment? This is something I think is important to go over. You know how when we're trying to pass a right to repair bill, they'll say, this is too broad. I mean, like this covers all laptops and cell phones. This is way too broad. This bill is bipartisan. The White House has, re has released their endorsement of this bill. This literally, like, what does this not apply to? What does this, it can, again, there's another 36 pages to go over. We have another 36 pages to go in this bill. This, like, look at this. Again, the criticism of all the right to repair bills is that, like, it's way too broad. This goes over way too many different devices. Like, brah, look at this list. A motion to further limit debate is in order and not debatable. Okay, so limiting, saying no to debate is not debatable. I guess at least they're consistent. An amendment to... <laughs> Four, advisory committees. The secretary may appoint technical advisory committees to advise the secretary in carrying out the responsibilities under this act. Chapter 10 of part one in title five of United States code shall not apply to any meeting such as an advisory meeting held pursuant to the subsection. Okay, so chapter 10 of part one of title five. My administration is committed to reducing the undue influence of special interests that for too long have shaped the national agenda and drowned out the voices of ordinary Americans. Special interests exert disproportionate influence in part by relying on lobbyists who have special access that is not available to all citizens. Although lobbyists can sometimes play a constructive role by communicating information to the government, their service and privileged positions within the executive brands can perpetuate the culture of special interest access that I am committed to changing. This places limitations on the ability of lobbyists to serve in government positions. I'm getting it now. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. I, this is starting to make sense. So, TikTok is, again, to be clear, and let, let's just be clear because somebody's going to misquote me in the comments because people on YouTube are just shitty. I, th I think TikTok is trash. I have no problem with banning TikTok. I get it. So, okay, you know how in New York State they had lobbyists write the law, like the right to repair law that got rewritten by Samsung and tech, Apple lobbyists for uh, um, TechNet? Remember that? That's, that's a problem. So the whole idea that like lobbyists get to work within the government, lobbyists get to serve on advisory committees, lobbyists get to write the law. So a lobbyist or a special interest for an existing social media company gets to be on an advisory committee that is advising the government on what social networks or websites to ban. Let that sink in for a second. Like, let, let's just let that sink in again. With TikTok, yes, I, they're pieces of shit, but at the end of the day, TikToks, who, who are their competitors? When it comes to ad revenue, when it comes to eyeballs, their competitors are Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, obviously Facebook, 
Instagram. And YouTube lobbyists are going to have an incentive structure to say, you know what? Yeah, yeah they, they are a bad adversary. They're bad for the United States. You've got to ban that. And to be clear, when it comes to TikTok, 100%. I agree with banning TikTok. Do I agree with just ignoring this section of United States code that was passed that tries to limit the effect that lobbyists and special interests have on creating legislation for the United States? Like, no. Because you know exactly how this is going to work. You're going to have lobbyists for Google and Meta and, and like, like just showing up and saying, hey, man, you know, this social media network, yeah, they seem to be trying to screw with elections. They seem to be kind of trying to undermine the United States, if you know what I'm saying. You know, we should probably get rid of them. Oh, by the, yeah, by the way, you know, I, I spent the last five years getting paid $80 million from Facebook. And like, you, you see where this is going. Like, do you, again, I'm not, and to be clear, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. I am, I, am, I am a MacBook repairman and I am pulling this out of my ass at one in the morning in a, in a, in a chair that got scratched up by a cat. But like, this language is clear as day over here. It, it literally, it, it's written right in the bill. To advise the secretary in carrying out the responsibilities, chapter 10 of part one of title five of the United States code shall not apply to any meeting of such advisory committee. And what is the purpose of that? The entire purpose of that is to reduce the undue influence of special interests and lobbyists. That's not going to get abused at all. This is so much more than a banned TikTok bill. This is so much more than a banned TikTok bill. And I hope people understand that. Uh, section 11, penalties. Here we go. Unlawful acts. One, in general, it shall be unlawful for a person to violate, attempt to violate, conspire to violate, or cause a violation of any regulation, order, direction, mitigation, measure, prohibition, or other authorization or directive issued under this act, including any of the unlawful acts described in paragraph two. Specific unlawful acts. Here's where it's going to get fun. The unlawful acts described in this paragraph are any of the following. No person may engage in any conduct prohibited by or contrary to or refrain from engaging in any conduct required by any regulation, order, direction, mitigation, measure, prohibition, or other authorization or directive issued under this act. B. No person may cause to aid, abet, counsel, command, induce, procure, permit, or approve the doing of any act prohibited by the omission of any act required by any regulation, order, direction, mitigation measure, prohibition, or other authorization or directive issued under this act. C. No person may solicit or attempt a violation of any regulation, order, direction, mitigation measure, prohibition, or authorization directive issued under this act. D. No person may conspire or act in concert with one or more other persons in any matter or for any purpose to bring about or to do any act that constitutes a violation of any regulation, order, direction, mitigation, measure, prohibition, or other authorization or directive issued under this act. E. No person may, whether directly or indirectly through any other person, make any false or misleading representation, statement, or certification, or falsify or conceal any material facts of the Department of Commerce, any official of any other executive department or agency, one, in the course of the investigation or any other action subject to this act, or any regulation, order, direction, mitigation measure, prohibition, or other authorization or directive issued thereunder, or two, in connection with the preparation, submission, issuance, use, or maintenance of any report filed or required to be filed pursuant to this act, or any regulation, order, direction, mitigation measure, prohibition, or other authorization or directive issued thereunder. F. No person may engage in any transaction or take any other action with intent to evade the provisions of this act or any other regulation, order, direction, mitigation measure, prohibition, or other authorization or directive. No person may engage in any transaction or take any other action with intent to evade the provisions of this act, a.k.a. use a VPN. Here is, I think, this is the line. If I had a guess, this is the line where we're talking about well, you know, the thing that's been in the thumbnail of everybody's YouTube videos. Again, penalties, unlawful acts. So for, you know, in the penalty section, they're describing unlawful acts, and they're talking about potential ways that you, are, you may be evading things. One of the main ways that you would evade a ban of a website is by using a VPN. As dev slash random says in the live chat, this is something they've wanted to put in for the past 15 years. And because so many people don't like TikTok and they are mad at China, they are going to be able to sneak in a kind of ban on VPNs uh, into, into this. Now, does it mean that a VPN in general is banned? No, it does not. However, 
if what it is that you are producing for people allows people to get around that, again, no person may conspire or act in a manner with another person in any manner for any purpose to bring about or to do any or to do any act that constitutes a violation of a regula regulation, order, direction, mitigation measure, prohibition, or other authorization. So even if you're not advertising to people, hey, by the way, you guys can get on TikTok if you use my service, simple, the, the simple use of a VPN, if the VPN is acting like a VPN and doing what a VPN is essentially supposed to be doing, then you are going to get in trouble because a VPN by design is going to allow you to evade these types of bans. Again, if the VPN is actually doing what and providing the service that a VPN is supposed to provide. You know, if I'm in a country that bans Netflix and I use a VPN that allows me to pretend I'm in America, then I can now use Netflix. Again, a VPN that does not allow me to evade a ban, that does not allow me to watch Netflix from that particular country is a bad VPN. It's not doing what I wanted to do. If this actually does, what if that if that service actually does what it's supposed to do, you, you'll get penalized under this act. G, no person may fail or refuse to comply with any reporting or record-keeping requirement of this act or any regulation, order, direction, mitigation, measure, prohibition, or other authorization or directive issue thereof. And here we go, here we go, as if we didn't already have enough, as if AT&T wasn't already keeping location data on people for 30 years, as if there weren't enough... Log is in record keeping at every internet service provider in America. B. Civil penalties. The secretary may impose the following civil penalties on a person for each violation by that person of this act or any regulation, order, direction, mitigation, measure, prohibition, or order, other authorization issued from this act. Okay, so now we're at the part where this is, this is how you're going to get in trouble if you wind up accessing something via a VPN or allowing somebody to access something that has been uh, had a mitigation measure or a prohibition put on it via a functioning VPN. One, a fine of not more than $250,000 or an amount that is twice the value of the transaction that is the basis of the violation with respect to the penalty which penalty is imposed, whichever is greater. Two, revocation of any mitigation measure or authorization issued under this act to the person. C, criminal penalties. In general, a person who willfully commits, willfully attempts to commit, or willfully conspires to commit, or aids and abets in the commission of an unlawful act described in subsection A, shall upon conviction be fined not more than $1 million, or if a natural person may be in prison for not more than 20 years, or both. You know what that means. Not more than $1 million means up to $1 million, right? You realize that not in prison for more than 20 years means in prison for up to 20 years, right? This is not a banned TikTok bill. This is bad. This is very, very, very bad. Contact your senator right now. Contact your house representative right now. Contact every single person that represents you at every form of government in your area and tell them that you will never vote for them again if this ever has the chance of seeing the light of day. This is dangerous. This is bad. This is not going to make America great. This is not going to fix anything. This is very, very, very bad. Two, civil forfeiture. A, forfeiture. In general, any property, real or personal, tangible or intangible, used or intended to be used in any manner to commit or facilitate a violation or an attempted violation described in paragraph one shall be subject to forfeiture to the United States. Two, proceeds. Any property, real or personal, tangible or intangible, constituting or traceable to the gross proceeds taken, obtained, or retained in connection with, or as a result of the violation or attempted violation described in paragraph one, shall be subject to forfeiture to the United States. You run a functioning VPN service. You run a functioning method that allows somebody to be able to access a social media network or a website that the Secretary of Commerce and his friends have decided is bad for America. You know what happens to you? Not only may you be going up to prison for up to 20 years, have up to a million dollars taken away from you, but every single customer that has paid you all of the money that you ever made from providing a normal service might just be property of the United States now. Contact every single representative that represents you. Don't ask me how to do it. Google, you're all grown adults. You're adults. If you can figure out how to feed yourself and wipe your ass, you can figure out how to get the people that represent you to get rid of this bullshit before it gets passed into law. Keep in mind, I'm, I haven't even read the statement from the United States yet. I haven't even re read the statement from the White House yet. We applaud the bipartisan group of senators led by Senator Warner and blah, 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 blah that, that introduced the Restrict Act. This legislation would empower the United States government. Oh, it certainly would empower the United... The White House thinks this is a good thing. The White House thinks this is a good thing. 
<laughs> this is bad. This has a chance of actually passing. Unlike an unfucked up right to repair bill, this actually has a chance of passing in a bipartisan way. B. Procedure. Seizures and forfeitures under this subsection shall be governed by the provisions of Chapter 46 of Title 18, United States Code, related to civil forfeitures, except that such duties are imposed in the Secretary of Treasury under the customs laws described in Section 981 of Title 18, United States Code, shall be performed by such officers, agents, and other persons, as may be designated for that purpose by the Secretary of Homeland Security of the Attorney General. 3. Criminal forfeiture. A. Forfeiture. Any person who is convicted under paragraph 1 shall, in addition to any other penalty, forfeit to the United States. 1. Any property, real or personal, tangible or intangible, used to or intended to be used in any manner to commit or facilitate the violation or attempted violation of paragraph 1. And 2. Any property, real or personal, tangible or intangible, constituting or traceable to the gross proceeds taken, obtained, or retained in connection with as a result of the violation. Procedure. The criminal forfeiture of property under this paragraph, including seizure and deposition of the property, and any related judicial proceeding, shall be governed by the procedure provisions of Section 413 of the Controlled Substances Act, except subsections A and D of that section. Section 12. Judicial Review. A. Definition. In this section, the term classified information, 1, has the meaning given to the term in Section 1A of the Classified Information Procedures Act, 18 U.S.C. App, and 2 includes A. Any information or material that has been determined by the federal government pursuant to an executive order, statute, or regulation to require protection against unauthorized disclosure for reasons of national security. And B. Any restricted data as defined in Section 11 of the Atomic Energy Act of 1954. We're citing the Atomic Energy Act of 1954 and a banned TikTok bill. This has more red flags than a post on r slash 2x chromosomes about a relationship. <laughs> Actions taken by the secretary under this act shall not be subject to sections 551, 553, 559, and 701 through 707 of Title V United States Code. Okay, what now what are these of Title V? Okay, let's take a look. Section, we're going to look these up individually because it doesn't tell me what those are and I have a feeling that there's some reason that that's important. The public is entitled to the fullest practical information regarding the decision-making process of the federal government. It is the purpose of this act to provide the public with such information while protecting the rights of individuals and the ability of the government to carry out its responsibilities. This sounds like freedom of information requests. That's what this sounds like. So this sounds like freedom of information requests. That's, that's what this is. And this says that this act shall not be subject to sections 553 through 559 and 701 and through 707 of Title V. What section 553 says, and I quote, it is hereby declared to the policy of the United States that the public is entitled to the fullest practicable information regarding the decision-making process of the federal government. It is the purpose of this act to provide the public with such information while protecting the rights of individuals and the ability of the government to carry out its responsibilities. So what it's saying is that this act is not subject to Section 551, 553 through 559, and Section 701 through 707 of Title V United States Code, a.k.a. freedom of information requests. That's what this is saying. Again, I'm not a lawyer. If you are a lawyer, please do correct me. What this is saying is that every, we have laws that have been passed to try and limit the influence that lobbyists and corporations have over our government. Those do not apply to this. We have laws that allow the citizens of the country to be able to ask for information from their government regarding decision-making processes, to be able to get access to documents and things that, you know, they kind of paid for as taxpayers to understand how the government is making their decisions. And that doesn't apply here either. This is horrible, horrible, horrible legislation. Make sure that anybody that voted for this, make sure that anybody that introduced this never gets into office again. Put aside your aggravations. Put aside the Democrat versus Republican stuff. Put aside your petty issues and grievances of the people you don't like. Anybody that introduced this piece of legislation, anybody that supports it in its current form, should never, ever, ever be allowed in the halls of power again in the United States of America. The Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States cleared the transaction and notified the parties to the transaction or a broader transaction that included the transaction that the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States completed all action with respect to the transaction or a broader transaction that included the transaction or. Who writes this, bro? Who is this, Dr. Seuss? Like, what the f... Are you serious? One more time. One more time. <laughs> 
The Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States cleared the transaction and notified the parties to the transaction or a broader transaction that included the transaction that the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States completed all action with respect to the transaction or a broader transaction that included the transaction. C. Administrative Procedures. Except with respect to a civil penalty imposed pursuant to Section 9B of this Act, the functions exercised under this Act shall not be subject to Sections 551, 553 through 559, and 701 through 706 of Title V United States Code. Okay, remember what those were? This was the whole Freedom of Information Act stuff. So this is related to you, the citizen of the United States, being able to understand what your government is actually doing. So when it comes to administrative procedures, except with respect to a civil penalty imposed pursuant to section this, the functions exercised under this act shall not be subject to sections of U.S. code that refer to you as a citizen being able to understand what your government is doing. That's what this is. That's what this is. This is a smack in the face to your rights as an American. Protected information and civil actions. And also, by the way, another thing here, the lack of the you know, freedom of information request kind of stuff, this means that if they do something screwed up, you, you may not know about it. You may not even know who's accountable or responsible. And you won't have the means to figure out who is accountable or responsible if a bad decision is made. It's not even that this is bad legislation that can be abused. It's that you may not even know who is abusing it, so you don't even know who to kick out of office. You don't know who to punish. You don't know who to hold accountable. This is horrible. You realize, you, you see this from like top to bottom, right? This is genuinely horrible. This subsection does not confer or imply any right to judicial review. Yeah, of course. Why would we want judicial review? Why would we want accountability in anything that we're doing here? Of course we don't want accountability. That's the point. F, no right of access. One, in general, no provision of this act shall be construed to create a right to obtain access to information in the possession of the federal government that was considered in making a determination under this act that a transaction is a covered transaction or interest or to prohibit, mitigate, or take action against a covered uh, transaction or interest, including any classified national security information or sensitive but unclassified information. So again, Somebody's going to say, well, yeah, you just can't give you access to classified information. Or sensitive but unclassified information. What's sensitive? Who defines what's sensitive? And why don't I get to know? Inapplicability of FOIA. Inapplicability of FOIA. Any information submitted to the federal government by a party to a covered transaction in accordance with this act, as well as any information the federal government may create relating to review of the covered transaction is exempt from disclosure under Section 552 of Title V United States Code, commonly referred to as the Freedom of Information Act. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing. You realize this is bipartisan support. The chances of this passing are very high. The White House likes this. We applaud the bipartisan group of senators led by Senator Warner and Thune, who today introduced the Restricting the Emergence of Security Threats that Risk Information and Communications Technology Act. This, le this has a chance of passing. This is not like a right to repair bill with the chance of it passing as 0.5% and Lewis really cheers it on but knows it's going to fail. This actually has a chance of becoming law in the United States of America. We need to stop this from happening. In conclusion, I dislike TikTok. And I don't like losing TikTok. If you created a bill that said that TikTok is banned, there are circumstances under which I could get behind a TikTok ban. TikTok is from a foreign adversary, and it is spyware. It's 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 worse than Google. Like it's worse than the, it's worse than the type of spyware that we have allowed to become commonplace in our personal lives. And it is bad. It it's just I have no problem with that being banned. This is not a TikTok ban. This goes a lot further than a TikTok ban. There are a lot of provisions in this so that this can be used for a lot more than just banning TikTok. It can be used to ban willy-nilly things that we don't like. More importantly, the measures that can be used to get around this ban are measures that we use in many other elements of our lives to ensure that we have privacy, to ensure that we can do things like just get around region blocks and geofencing on, on movie sites and stuff like that things that we use every single day. In prison for up to 20 years, fines of up to $1 million, and lastly, no accountability. We have sections of United States Code relating to how lobbyists have control over our legislature and trying to reduce the control and influence that lobbyists have over our legislature. This act states explicitly that those sections of United States Code that have been there for over a decade get tossed out the window. The Freedom of Information Act gets tossed out the window. So we have high penalties, broad ability for abuse, depending on who is in office and what it is that they don't like, and a complete lack of accountability or transparency. This is not a banned TikTok bill. This is Patriot Act 2.0. Everything that they wish they probably could have gotten in 10 or 20 years ago but weren't able to sneak in there, 
They are now sneaking in there now. And dare I say it, they're not sneaking it in there because this bill is public and anybody who wishes to, even anybody with a dial-up internet connection if they had, can download this PDF and read through the entirety of it. And anybody, if they have access to the internet, if they have access to communications devices that allow them to view the video that I have put on this platform, whether this is on YouTube or Odyssey or Rumble, if you have the means to be able to access this video, you have the means to figure out who your local congressperson and senator is and ensure that they know that you will vote for their opposition if they vote for this bill. That regardless of what your aggravations are with the other party, regardless of what your aggravations are on other issues, let them know that if they let this go through, if they let this go through in this form, if they continue to support it, regardless of who runs against them, a carrot could run against them, you will vote for the carrot just to avoid them being elected to another term. That is the only way these people will believe that there are consequences to their actions if we let them know. And after we let them know, we actually act on it. We do what we say we're going to do. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.